when you're coming to ask the question, I have many people asking this question. I want you to show me imamat, show me it textually, show me it from the Quran. Which part of imamat did you want to see from the Quran? It's like a person saying to me, show me the whole understanding of prophethood in one ayah of the Holy Quran. Which part of prophethood do you want to understand? The mission of prophets? The infallibility of prophets? The knowledge of prophets? Because I can't find you an eye on the Holy Quran which gives me the understanding of the whole of prophethood in one. I could, there's no eye which says Al Nabi, Al Alim, Al Ma'soom, Alim Al Ghayb. There's no eye which tells me every single function or definition of Nabuwa. When I come therefore towards understanding Imama from the Holy Quran, which part of Imama do you want me to explain to you? Imama as a position which a prophet of Allah reached as his highest position, I can show you that. For example, in chapter 2 verse 1, 2, 4, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Nabi Ibrahim, after Nabi Ibrahim was a Nabi, a Rasul, reached the level of Khalil, Prophet, Messenger, Friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, high station. Then Imama, قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ imama. I have made you an Imam for the people. It shows that while he was a Nabi and a Rasul, Allah told him there's another station, a high station. And that is the station of being an Imam for the people as well. A leader for the people as well. One who's wholeheartedly sacrificing himself to guide people spiritually and politically and has the knowledge to be able to guide the people in all of their affairs. Now, that's one aspect of Imam. That it's an extremely high station, which the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not all of them, but you found that, for example, the Ulil Azam prophets, they reached that station of Imam. You see the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Khatim al-Nabiyyin, he is. Khatim al-Mursaleen, he is. Do we agree? Yes. No one's ever called him Khatim al aimma the seal of the prophets, we've heard him being called the seal of the prophets many times. When it comes to, for example, something like the seal of the messengers, we've heard that as well. When it comes to, for example, the seal of the imams, never heard that. Sayyid al imma yes. But when it comes to seal of the imams, is that an indication that there were imams after? Let's leave it at that. Firstly, you have Nabi Ibrahim reaching the high stage of imam. Number two, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses an imam on earth. I'm not saying anything to do with the 12 imams. I'm saying imam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designates an imam, that it's a high position that prophets reach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentions, I'm appointing you as an imam, O Ibrahim, for the people. Okay. Number three, likewise, those whose obedience is the same as the obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that, that is a, an extremely high level to reach. Many times in the Quran we hear the ayah, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ Oh you who believe, obey Allah, obey the Prophet. How many times? A number of times. Obey Allah, obey the Prophet. Obey Allah, obey the Prophet. In Surah 4 verse 59, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks that the obedience is extended. Hold on, Islam finishes with the Prophet Muhammad. Mm. Peace be upon him and his family. Islam ends with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Khatam of the Nabiyyin, Khatam of the Mar Mursaleen. But hold on. Islam ends with the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Why in Surah 4 verse 59 does Allah say, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu. أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey Allah, we all agree, we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obey the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Okay, Islam finishes with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. And obey those in authority from amongst you. Question, who explains to me this verse? What did we say earlier? Anas bin Malik, Abu Huraira, Aisha, Abdullah bin Umar. I have no interest in their explanation from now. Until someone puts me six feet under the ground, I will never, ever, ever, never have an interest in their explanation. 
My Prophet said to me that he leaves behind two weighty things. Hold on to them and you'll never go astray. The Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. Do you agree? Of course. This is Sahih Muslim. It's not just in our works of literature. I'm quoting Muslim for polemical reasons. Mm. Otherwise, it's not authority for me. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, says to me, hold on, Quran and Bayt. When I go to Surah 4 verse 59 of the Holy Quran, when Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq explain this ayah of the Quran, I don't think anyone can doubt their knowledge. Mm. Whether you're Sunni or Shia, there is no doubting the knowledge of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu alayhi wa They said that this refers to us, the Imams of Al-Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made our obedience obligatory in the same way as he made obligatory the obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. You find therefore that obeying and believing and following the Imams is a connection to obeying, following and believing in the Holy Prophet peace be upon his family. And that obedience to them is obligatory. 